Yo, what up guys, it's your boy Mini, and we're back with a new video on the basic of winning the scrim. Now, these are squads, but these tips do apply to duels and solo, since they are a basic understanding on what you need to know in scrims. The more you play, the more you develop these skills. Now, let's start off with the first three key factors early on. You gotta understand your materials, your loot, and the mobility you have. Now materials can help you rotate to get late game, disengage, or force an early on fight to gain better loot. Now if you don't have the materials and you do have good loot, you're able to punish kids who lack mobility early on and you can force fights to gain their materials or their loot even so. Now the last key factor for early on scrims is having mobility. Now this helps you to rotate late game or get high ground when circle closest. Now you can have jump pads, redeploy, grappler, even explosive because they could benefit you by spamming a team that is boxed up, forcing them to rebuild and not punish you while rotating. Now let's look at the first fight we encounter in this scrim. So D is fighting some kids in broken house in big chair, and we have natural high ground. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start playing angles while D, X, and shot force them to focus on them. Now, as soon as I land on top of the big tree, I wait for my teammates to apply a little bit of pressure, making them re-peak, and then I could beam one of the kids who are holding a head glitch. Now we didn't have to force this fight since we had good loot, but we usually rotate big chair to gain more materials, and we already had good positioning on them. I knocked one already, I knocked one already. Right, I need help, I'm getting grappled on, I need help. He's I'm running away. See if he goes on you, I'm just see if he goes on you. Stop, he ran away. I'm being so dead ass. He's over there breaking cheese right now. What is this kid trying to push? What are you doing? Now as we continue rotating and get into the circle, we have another team that try to force a fight on us. Now teams usually do this if they see you fighting, it's called third party or if you just came into the circle they assume that you're weak thankfully it was only like two or three of them so we were able to like beam them out of their plane punish them with damage and just clear it out as soon as possible before things get worse God, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get somebody else to play me i'm just telling you like you can't be doing that shit. It's bad luck. are you serious right now stop no are you serious no are you serious <laughs> i need half of everything just being serious i have nothing i knocked him by the way also notice how we've seen a team inside Shifty, but we decided to ignore them simply because we do not know how many individuals they have and where their team is at. This is the importance of mapping out a team. If you're like looking at one kid, you always want to assume there's four kids holding different angles. Because if you just forced at one kid, you're going to get shot from a different angle and it's going to turn out to go terribly. Now the third encounter we have is with a team that is high ground. Now this is also a terrible play on us simply because many teams that don't have mats usually share the same boxes, but it's also a mind trick. Teams that are like a team of two, they usually turtle out a lot so they could seem like it's a team of four instead of a team of two. But we force this team on top of the high ground because we just assume there's only two kids and there's only two like one by ones. And we force this fight easily with the plane by ramming it through and just punching them before we even got near them. And this ended up to be a good play since there was only two of them and we gained more loot, better loot, and we still have mobility for the next rotation while holding high ground. Now we do the same play again, but this time we have two planes, however there was nobody holding this high ground which was good for us. We were able to hold this high ground to the end of the circle and we were able to rotate with a plane, but we decided to rotate without a plane since making too much noise we're going to get beamed from all the teams around. Now this next rotation worked out good for us even though it could have went bad. So we landed between two teams by mistake and they both decided to crossfire us. So we had to apply pressure to one team. Basically we started to build on top of them just to like fear them. And once we did that they started like annoying us and the other team behind us we just were able to just punish them. The main issue we had we didn't really hold high ground as much so we were like we had like too high and too low and like it was only two of us like punching kids rotated into the circle. It doesn't really matter though, since we didn't have that much heal. It was a good play to just like play 2-2. Two -two. And for many that don't know what 2-2, two -two, this like only applies to squad. You could do it in duels depending on like your health. But it's basically like when you guys split up and hold different high grounds, while the person high helps you play more aggro. And the kid below plays aggro, so they won't focus on the kid high. Now right here I made another mistake. Once I grappled, I was by myself, I didn't know like my teammates didn't have grapple, but besides that the game like glitch, I couldn't place the floor, so it stuck me under the kids like high ground, and it like just messed me up, I took damage, I had to turn up while my team came, and then we played more aggro to get the high. I got high. He's trying to grapple high, he's trying to grapple high. He shot me down, shot me down. I have highs, I have highs, I have highs. Yeah, I need heals from one of you guys. I have highs, are you guys coming to me? Oh no. 
Fuck. I need yo, anyone got shield? Get on me, get on me. Deagle them, deagle them for 90. I need I gotta heal, I gotta heal. Bro, oh, I need any metal or some shit. Go here. Yo, um, get the mecha, give me the mecha. Need a mini? I don't have the mecha, I have a mini. Yo, who took the mech in yeah, my I got you, I got you, I got oh. you. Come here, come here. Drink the minis. Drink the minis, drink the minis. Now, it's early to rotate early on, because if you rotate late, you're going to be punished by kids who are currently holding high in the circle. It depends on the situation, honestly. Like, if there's no natural high ground, then you want to rotate early and then force in the high ground. If you rotate late with a natural high ground, you're able to, like, land once the circle closes into, like, the area that's not in the zone. Now, once we held high, we started carpeting. And we waited till the circle to close in. And once the circle closed, then we noticed how far the circle is. It is terrible to carpet all the way to the next zone. One, you burn a lot of mats. Two, you're not gonna make it most of the time because you're gonna get shot down. Because once you start carpeting for a long distance, you're not able to patch what's outside the zone. So people who are like, have like any type of explosive or deal, they're gonna start shooting you down. Like even if you have redeploy, you're still gonna get punished like while gliding down. You're gonna take like, a lot of damage because we deploy is like twice as slow as regular uh, deployment so what we did we sent two of our teammates to go mark an area on the circle while we protect them so they won't get punished and once they got that area they started building one by ones like i stated you get early rotations you build the one by one so you can have natural high ground on your platform and then we rotate while they protect us now in a dual solo situation what you would do you would do what sean x did you will go early, build one by ones, and start punishing kids. Now, you don't have to carpet the whole zone if you don't have the materials. What many people do, they let the people who are tarpeting under them, and they just start following their path. But they make sure they're still holding that high ground. So, like, once they see people building ramp, they jump and, like, just start building another one by one. So, they won't get lose their high ground by running on top of another person tarpeting. Now, we did have a situation where a team tried to rift on us, and we held it off perfectly. So, Shai had traps, and we all started beaming on the kids that came down. If you don't have traps and you're trying to hold high ground, the best thing you could do is place a flat and beam the kids before they get as close as possible. Then you start ramping up. Since if they do land in the same flat as you or like off away from you, you could easily start building one by one. If they land on the same flat as you, they're going to phase through your uh, staircase or they're going to get boxed. One or two. Either way, you're going to win that situation and they're still going to be lower than you. Now here we do the 2-2 tactics again. So me and D is holding high ground but X and Shaw is playing aggro. Now, this, like I said, it will be different in duo depending on the situation. Like, the situation is going to be based on your health, your mats, like, your weapons. Like, there's so many factors towards it for duos and solos. But since the squads, X and Sha had decent health. I mean, D could have also played aggro because of his health. But I couldn't do it I had no shield. I had, like, 58 HP. So I was just playing the support role. And D was just playing my support role in case the team decided to just grapple up high ground. And he was like, they do knock me. So we ended up winning the matches, we played that out perfectly, we followed all the key factors, rotation, positioning, and mobility. All these steps help, it does not matter if it's squads, duels, or solo, these are key factors that help a player understand the, the basic understanding of the game, and how to like rotate during a scrim, how to position yourself during a scrim. The only way you can learn more is by playing yourself and building up your own strategies. He's white health under us. I did, they're all, they're all below, they're all below. Building up, building up! Down me. I don't have that many mats. Should I go? Uh, I, I have a glider. Uh, I can Right under you. Oh my god, he just put a four. I got him. Watch out on me. Nice. You're right after me. Nice. Let's go. Let's go. This is your boy, Chronic Mini. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like, drop a subscribe, and go follow us on our social media at Fear Chronic for both Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to click that bell to stay alerted for future videos. Hope you guys enjoyed.